Hello, IBM Environmental Students. Today we're going to continue talking about human population. Specifically, we're going to be talking about demographic transition. So when we talk about demographic transition, we're going to be really looking at age sex pyramids. And we might have even started looking at this in class, or if you're taking geography, you might have seen this already. But these are pyramids, shape-wise, but what their job is to analyze the ratios of different sex, male or female, and how they are different proportions within the population at different age levels. So through this, we can kind of look at major age categories, um, people who are pre reproductive, they're not yet ready to make babies, reproductive age categories, and post-reproductive age categories. This is really important because depending on which of these categories is large within the population, we might look that the population is about to expand suddenly or if it's about to shrink. So this will help us really look at growth types. We can see really rapid growth, slow growth, zero growth, or negative growth as we think about this. So here are some examples of those age sex pyramids. Um, so for instance, we're always going to have on one side men and on one side women. And we're going to always have the lower age categories at the bottom. The middle is always going to be that reproductive age group that can have babies. And at the top, we're going to have those that can't have babies anymore for the fact that they are older in life. So we have different um, nations in those different categories. So here on the left, we have a rapid growth because it's such a large group that has recently been born and soon they're going to be able to make babies themselves. So this pyramid is going to show growth in about um, 20 years. And here we have slower growth, or if not even stable growth. Um, and we can see that because both of these are the shape of triangles. When we have that lower age group really large, that means later the population is going to start to grow. But between these two, the triangle base is much larger on the rapid growth versus the slow growth. And as we start to get to the shape of a rectangle, we're going to see zero to stable growth. And a lot of countries are just like that. Um, eventually, as the triangle starts to look like inverted shape, we're going to see that the growth is not only just slowing or stable, there's even a shrinking population because people are just having less babies. So overall, this is going to be related to what we are learning previously, birth rate, death rate, and even fertility. As birth rate and fertility go down, we're going to see not only zero or stable growth, but even a negative growth rate. We're going to learn a lot of different case studies, and a couple are listed here, um, and relate this to different policy decisions. But not only that, we can also talk about this figure here, which we're going to have a picture in our review packet. So you don't need to feverishly try to draw it, but it, the basics are kind of important. Those different shapes are going to be related to, again, birth rate, death rate, and the size of an overall population. And we can categorize different um, nations based on these stages, and we're going to go through each of them one by one. So these five different stages are going to depict um, graphically how the population is growing just like those age sex pyramids. So that first stage is referring to a stationary population. Um, and we call it high stationary because it's pre-industrial. It's usually going to be an LADC. Their conditions are really harsh to live in. They're going to have really high birth rate and high death rate, as we can see from this chart. That's usually because infant mortality is really high, which is going to cause them to have lots of babies. And usually that's just because sanitation is horrible. Um, there's not a lot of food and so forth. So um, luckily, this is not as common in the world, but it does definitely happen. Um, and we'll talk about a couple of different examples throughout our unit. The second stage is a bit more common in the LADC. Um, population grows rather fast. Birth rate is starting, is still really high, but what we see happening to death rate is death rate is starting to lower. This is because living conditions are starting to get a little bit better. Those things like water quality, waste management, air, nutrition, and medicine, they're starting to get better. We're starting to get a little bit more industrialized. Notice if we peek at those age sex pyramids, that it's still a really wide base, but it's not as extreme as the previous one. And, um, we're probably still on the rural end of the spectrum. We're not yet moving to cities. In stage three, we're starting to get industrialized. We would really call this a transitioning um, nation. We are pretty much mostly 
LADC, MEDC mix, depending on where we're looking within that nation. So industry is continuing. Uh, we can see that birth rate is starting to decrease. Death rate is kind of stabilizing. Um, but wh why why we, we focus on stage three so much is because there's a problem here. A lot of times countries get stuck in this area. Um, the reason why is maybe there's not enough education, there's not enough skilled workers, maybe they don't have enough resources, whether it's um, just financial resources, or maybe they don't have enough energy resources, water resources, food resources, and maybe just for one reason or another, there's illness, death rate might still be high. So we see a lot of different places in this demographic trap, um, and we're going to talk about some examples more in class. Um, the fourth stage, we consider a stable MEDC. This is where the U.S. is considered versus we would call stage three, some parts of China and India. And we would call the U.S. pretty different. And this is in stage four, we're really going to start considering the place in MEDC. The population growth is still learning to stop. Um, it might continue to increase like the U.S. because of immigration. Birth rate and death rate start to equal out. Um, and they might even start to decline as we head to stage five. And in stage five, we're a declining MEDC. This is like Germany and Japan, where they might have such an old population that they start to even have a declining amount of um, babies being born, and this could be worrisome. So in stage five, we worry that places like Japan and Germany, they're going to start to decline. And the worry there is that if there's not enough skilled workers that are young, how are they going to help take care of the old? How are they going to have enough people to fill jobs? How are they going to have enough people to take care of health care? Will they run out of money for Social Security and so forth? Um, this isn't as big of a problem if they continue to have immigrants coming into their nation, but some places like Japan don't have an really strong immigration policy that allows for a lot of people to come in and places like the US really depend on immigrants otherwise we would also be stage five and that's a really interesting topic in and of itself so why do we use these population modeling techniques such as talking about demographic transition or talking about age sex pyramids well a lot of it is to double check that we are being sustainable as a nation and as a world are we reaching caring capacity that's kind of controversial and we're going to be digging into that for the rest of topic eight we want to make sure that we have an optimum number of people are we using our environmental resources more quickly that makes us actually ruin them or run out of them that would suggest that we're already at carrying capacity but if we're being sustainable we're not degrading the environment faster than it can regenerate and that's an idea that we're going to be continuing to investigate for the next couple of weeks so these models help us predict change because over time we can see age sex pyramids start to change so this wide base can become bigger and bigger as those ages grow up what else do we look at well these things can help policy decisions in governments um, we'll be investigating different choices different nations will be making for instance there's different family planning decisions a nation can make there's different amounts of empowering women whether they're being educated or encouraged to go into the workforce and there's different economic rewards for how people might make decisions or tax breaks for whether or not they're having kids or having too many kids. And those decisions are going to affect policy and they're going to influence population size. We're going to be investigating two major nations and how they make those decisions. And you're going to have to come up with your own decision on whether or not you agree with what they're doing.